Implementing linear regression manually is instructive but tedious. Thankfully, Keras makes this easy to deal with in a general framework. In this module, we'll use Keras for the first time to model some decimal numbers using a few variables. Although Keras is probably overkill for this particular problem, it also represents the simplest possible model you can create. Consider our cost of a meal problem from before. In addition to mass, suppose you also thought that temperature affected the costs. How should we go about attacking this problem so we can predict meal costs and understand which variables affect costs the most? This is sort of a very general mental model of how we're going to do machine learning with Keras. First, we're going to determine what our base level features are. In this case, we have only the mass of a meal as well as the temperature of a meal. This will be fed into two places. One, we need to gather the actual data to have these variables in the first place. If you don't have any data, this type of modeling approach isn't going to be very effective. Next, on the right where it says program Keras model, we're going to implement whatever the appropriate machine learning structure is. In this case, we're going to be implementing simple linear regression, but this will vary and we'll zoom in on this area later. Finally, we take our specified machine learning model and we apply the data to it, so we train the model. We're going to compute various weights of the model by using the given data. Once we have these weights, we can do two things. We can either use the model to make predictions on some new data or on some data that's particularly relevant, or we can look at the weights and the rest of the model and try to understand what the model really means, that maybe this variable is particularly important, while this other variable is completely irrelevant. So let's jump into the code. First, we just need to read in some data. Do np.load like we did before and grab the first array. This time, we have two input variables, mass and temperature in the first two columns, and one output, cost, in the final position. Plot each one separately. Mass looks like it still has a linear relationship with cost. Temperature, not so much. If you want, you can do a scatter plot of temperature versus mass and scale the size of the data point with the cost. It may or may not be illuminating here, but the right visualization in the right place makes insight crystal clear. As you're increasing the mass, you're increasing the cost. It's not obvious if you have the same trend on the temperature scale. It might not really matter there. But let's see how to build the model using Keras anyway. First, let's do some basic imports. It might seem like a lot, but it's all logically consistent. Do import Keras just to have access to all parts of the library you might need, but not all the time. Keras.models provides sequential, a simple interface for building models with one set of inputs, outputs, and a succession of layers. To do the actual transformations, we need dense layers, mapping a weight from every input to every output of the layer. And we need various activation functions, which will generally do nonlinear things to these intermediate values. We'll go into specifically which activations we need as we need them. Finally, to compute the weights, since we can't generally use the normal equation, we'll import SGD, short for Stochastic Gradient Descent, a version of gradient descent that works on a few data points at a time. Use Keras for machine learning in three core steps. First, you specify the model which is composed of various computations on data. Think back to the diagram displayed earlier. If you can envision your problem as a diagram or graph, you're on the right track. The model just makes this explicit in code as you chain together operations. One catch. The code is purely descriptive. You don't execute any of these computations until you train or predict with your model. To make a model useful, you need to take the next step training it with some actual data. Let's take a look at these steps since this occupies the bulk of effort in machine learning. To make this happen in code, start with a new empty model using sequential. Now we can start adding layers to it, where each layer takes the previous layer's output as input and outputs some different number of values. Dense layers use every input in every output by taking a weighted sum with different weights for each input. That is, it's basically linear. The very first layer needs to specify the input shape since it will get the data directly, but from then on, Keras will track the shapes for you. We just need to convert two values from our data, the mass and the temperature, directly into one value, the cost. 
You can do the activations as arguments to the dense layer, but let's explicitly do it by adding another bit to the model with activation. This is a purely linear model, so stick with linear. To do the actual training, we need to set up the gradient descent optimizer. This just takes one parameter, learning rate, which determines what fraction of the gradient to correct weights by. Lower values may take more passes through the data, also called epics, to train, but are relatively stable. A learning rate that is too large risks overcorrecting the weights, which can actually lead to the squared error getting worse and worse. Slow and careful versus fast and reckless. 0 0.01 is a typical starting value and the default. Now, we need to add this optimizer information to our model and tell Keras what it is we want to minimize. This is known as compiling the model, although generally your model will not actually be compiled down to machine code until it trains the first time. Anyway, MSE is shorthand for mean squared error, and SGD is our saved optimizer. So let's pass in a metric to see while training mean squared error again. This will be more important later in another problem. The fitting itself is one line. If you're familiar with scikit-learn, you should recognize most of this. Call model.fit with your input data as the first argument, the correct output data as the second, and the number of passes to make over them, here try 100. Depending how big your dataset and model are, it will take more or less time to run. As your model cycles through data, you'll see a slick progress bar, one of the most satisfying sights in machine learning. There's one more thing to mention. When we fit the model, we save the result into this h variable. The model object itself saved the weights. So what's this other thing for? h is a Keras history object. It holds an array of the score of our model as we trained. By plotting this, you can see the model hopefully improve over time. Here, we can see the loss quickly descend and converge to some minimum. Your graph won't always look this clean, so be on guard. Now that you've specified and trained your model, you can advance to the next step and predict values given new or old data. This is probably the most common usage of a machine learning model. Model.predict of your input is all it takes to use the model to generate the best guess at the output values. Let's plot this against the real data, one variable at a time. First the mass, which is in the first column, blue circles for the measured data, and green crosses for the predicted. It's a decent fit, but it looks like the prediction doesn't quite have the right slope yet. The key here is you're going to need to train the model for longer at this learning rate. So try that and then see what the fit looks like. Now let's do likewise for the temperature. The code is almost the same, you just change the column zero to column one. Hmm, it's not as clear what's going on here. Although the values sometimes appear close, you can tell because it hasn't finished training, it's not obvious. Also, you just don't see that strong linear relationship when looking at the temperature graph and the versus the cost. The other key use of a model is to study the trained weights. This is typically to understand what a model is really doing and what variables are really important. In Keras, this is easy to do with model.getWeights. It simply returns a list of NumPy arrays, generally two such arrays for each dense layer, one for the variable weights and one for the bias terms, which act like a y-intercept in a linear model. Based on the plots and these weights, you may have figured out that the temperature doesn't really affect the meal price. This is fundamental machine learning, predictions, and insights. That's really all there is to it for simple linear regression. If you want to predict a decimal, also called a floating point number, then you're done. While this may not seem like much, linear regression is a great, cheap, general tool to apply. Properly used, it's been the workhorse of contemporary science for decades. Not every problem, however, fits into this paradigm. The next video will examine how to handle predicting categories rather than values.